and welcome to Epiphytic Cacti. Today we're inside. I just got off work and I know that I only posted one video this weekend and I normally post two, but that's because I was waiting for this box so that I could post a second video. So this box is actually, um, I ordered this from someone that I have ordered from in the past, but I've generally kind of ordered, um, I think like small epiphyllum plants from her in the past. But she actually sells in a Facebook group called Karma's Plants and Seeds Shop. She sells all different kinds of things, um, including, but not limited to, epiphytic cacti. I actually think this box pretty much contains mostly Schlumbergera hybrids, but I think it's mostly Schlumbergera hybrids of the more rare variety. So let's kind of go ahead and dig in here. Here's one. Let's see. It's about to be too cold for me to get plants. I actually just on principle do not order plants in the winter time. I just like to get some last minute orders in, you know, going into the winter time, especially things that will, you know, keep me kind of happy in the long, long season. These are really well packed. The way that this was wrapped and the way that it was packed, it was really, really well, well put together here. It's also taped down into the paper. I like the little spikes to keep the these little like dowels to actually keep the the fades from breaking off. Seems to have definitely done its job. Um, and this one is I oh, can't really read the label. Oh, so this is actually um is kind of a more rare rare Schlumbergera. It's not the most rare thing, but it is a little bit more rare. So if you've actually heard of the um, Schlumbergera hybrid Aspen, it is a white hybrid that has frilled edges. The edges are like extremely frilled. And this one is, uh, the, the proper name of it is not red Aspen, but it's a name that everyone kind of calls it. So they just kind of call it the red Aspen. And as it sounds, it is literally the red version. So it looks very similar to white aspen, only it's red in color. It has frilled edges. However, I will actually say that I have read in places that this hybrid is actually really inconsistent. So you may not always have perfectly frilled edges, you know, so it's something to kind of keep in mind if you're always, always expecting that kind of thing. It might not always be completely completely realistic with this hybrid so here's this guy he looks really nice it's nice and fat clades he doesn't seem stressed out at all he seems very happy i know that in our facebook group a lot she posts like these pictures of um here's another one she posts these pictures of i think like her her garden and stuff because i actually do not think that she can grow outside year round so I think much like myself, she has to move her plants inside and she's got these gorgeous pictures of this inside growing area. Oh, here's a little guy. So <laughs> it's kind of funny, but I, I keep buying these from just various different places and that's really hilarious. So this is a species and um, this is uh, Pseudoripsalis. Amazonica. It's kind of difficult to describe really because it is in a genus of its own. And I think like a lot of times people will try to describe it as being like the quote unquote blue epiphyllum. It, it is more of a purplish color, but it's still a really unusual color to have, I think, an epiphytic cacti. So it really kind of stands on its own. Its growth is really thin, like in comparison. It, it actually has growth a lot more like uh, Kimnachia romulosa. So it's a lot thinner, meaning that it's a lot more susceptible to the cold. So if you do grow this one, while it's really cool to grow, you need to actually maintain a temperature above 50 degrees. But a lot of times I hear a lot of information of like, in order for you to grow this plant, you need really high humidity. That is, in my experience, I have found that absolutely not to be true. I have found that in the Midwest, even with the heaters running and everything like that, this plant does perfectly fine as a house plant, no real big deal. So, you know, I think if you want to try it, as long as you can keep those temperatures above 50, I think you will do just fine.
so cute. Look at how well, I love this. I love how like the, the clades are actually woven into these little stakes so that they don't bend in shipping. That is just such a great idea. Okay, so I'm not entirely sure how to say this, um, but we'll kind of go for, we'll, we'll just kind of go for it. Uh, so this is actually a considerably more rare hybrid. It is Bronca Dobra. And what's unusual about this is that there, there are very few of these that are in existence. And from my understanding, um, not Bronca Dober, but I mean, there are very few Schlumbergera hybrids in existence that have a double flower. From my understanding, there is very little information even known about this hybrid. It's, it's kind of mysterious as to how it ever came to be. Um, but it does have a double flower and the color of this one is white. I mean, a, a double Schlumbergera flower is really kind of amazing. So there we go. I feel like this little guy is just really calling my name. I know what this is and I'm just really excited about this. Um, the, even the first time that I saw this, actually, when I saw it come through her feed, I was kind of like, wait, what? Because um, I, I immediately was like, Hold on a second. This is actually the other version of this. All right, so here we go. So this is really interesting and you can see, you know, this is, it's really quite interesting, um, the growth on this, especially when I tell you what it is. So this is actually Phyphra monacantha. And if you're like, wait a second, that looks really strange, that's because it's not the more common Phyphra monacantha that you see, the, the one that has spines. So this guy has little orange flowers. Um, it is the other one. <laughs> so there's a different subspecies of this, this one, one, one that doesn't have spines. And it grows really beautifully. And so the moment that I saw this, I think on her feet, I was like, what, what, what's going on with this, you know, monacantha? And so like, I started like looking it up and researching it and everything. And I was like, wait a second, this is the other one. And so I got really excited and I really, really wanted this. So I'm really excited and really happy to have this. I mean, look at how pretty that is. I find those guys too. I find that they root very easily. They grow very easily. Um, it's not... It's a really, really easy growing sort of epiphytic cacti. Some of them are like that. Some of them are just really, really easy to grow. I love opening plants. <laughs> Sometimes I'm concerned that maybe I just order them just to open them. <laughs> wow, this guy looks really pretty. Oh, wow. Look at the size of that clade. Wow. Sometimes I, I like catch that where there are like some things where their clade is just really humongous. Let's just really take stuff in there. So this is Ice Dancer. Wow, look at those. That clay is really amazing. I don't think that I know that much about this one. Um, but I do know that it's got really gorgeous clays and, and really large clays. Sometimes, like here, check this out. You see the size of that clay up against that clay? Yeah. That sometimes you just catch that where there are some hybrids that just have these humongous clades. There we go. We got three more to go. I feel like packaging these must just be an art form. <laughs> you know, like the tape and everything. <laughs> that takes a lot of patience, I think. 
to go through. I mean, if you think about like the amount of patience and care that had to have actually gone into this kind of packaging like this, it's pretty remarkable. And there have been times where I have like just gotten plants just dumped in boxes and it's like, um, actually the other day, the other day, so I had ordered like these terracotta trays and I think I ordered, oh my gosh, I think it was about 40 of them. And I only managed to get about 25 that weren't broken. So yeah, I appreciate the, the care. Oh, oh my gosh. So this hybrid, this is crazy. Um, the name of this hybrid, I love the little bell, the little tapes that are keeping them. Look at just how funny that is, keeping them kind of upright and together so they didn't break or get damaged. This hybrid, though, it's actually called Chiba Princess. Absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous. So, like, I highly recommend that, you know, you kind of Google that and, and check this one out because this is really something remarkable. So I'm super excited to have this one. I actually think that... um. For the most part, um, from my understanding, is that really most Schlumbergera hybrids that are, um, that start with Chiba, C H I B A, so like that, like Chiba Spot, uh, Chiba Peru. I think that you know generally you can you can make a pretty educated guess that they actually came out of the Mitsuhashi uh, nursery in Japan. So that's kind of a fun thing. And I think that in some cases, not all of those hybrids um, have actually been uh, registered here in the United States. So I know that I've seen some like Epiphylum Chiba hybrids that you won't actually find in any kind of registry or anything because they just weren't registered in the United States. So it doesn't mean that they're not legitimate hybrids, it just means that they won't be found in our registries. Wow, another one with just humongous clades. These clades are out of control. Hey, I feel like I want to ask her what she's been feeding them. <laughs> she's been feeding them something, I know that. They seem like some pretty little happy, happy and rather large clades on some of these guys. I don't know if maybe they just naturally have huge clades, but I'm guessing since most of them seem to be having really large clades, probably that she's feeding them something. I will say about this one, this guy actually is going to have really large clades, I think, because this is the hybrid pink chocolate. And I believe, so pink chocolate is a pretty rare hybrid, but outside of that, I believe it's actually a cross with Orochiano, which would have very large clades and very large flowers generally. So... I think that's the reason for why these clades are actually so huge. And I believe that this actually has a very, very, very large flower as well. Really gorgeous one that I thought, like, I really want to have that in my collection. So, and now we've got one more. And I know what this is. And I'm actually pretty excited about this. It's kind of a funny thing because I do remember that when I saw this one, I kind of just bypassed it. You know, I knew that it said that it was rare and everything, but I mean, it was just kind of like, I'm not really sure. You know, I was kind of dragging my feet as a little bit on the fence about this guy. And I, I think I kind of felt that way because, you know, I looked at the flower and I just kind of thought, you know, he just seems like other things that I kind of have and stuff like that. And I was just really on the fence about the whole situation. Um, but then I started doing some digging. She kind of asked me about it too, you know, and, and it ended up getting in the package here. Um, but it really was something really crazy. It's just really beautiful. You can see again, this, this awesome little tape to kind of keep him in there. And you can see the buds here. Um, I'm guessing that one's probably going to blast. I don't know. We'll see um, whether they stay or not. But actually, this is the Schlumbergera hybrid, Frony. I think it's Frony. Maybe it's Frony. Not really sure. But I believe that this is another Orishiana hybrid. And the thing about this is, as well, it, it's one of those things, again, that I think that photos are so deceptive. So I think that if you take any plant, like any flower, and you actually just take a picture of it and it is outside of any kind of size reference for anything, 
you can just make an assessment. Your brain will just kind of fill in blanks because that's what our brains do. It just fills in blanks and decides that, you know, based off of all of the other information that it's seen or whatever, like this is just kind of a normal Schlumbergera. And that's what you would think. Like if you just saw the picture, which is what happened to me. However, I was kind of curious about this because I know that she was like, oh, you know, like it's got this massive flower. And so I started doing some research and then I came across a YouTube video, which I believe is by Desert Plants of Avalon, where she actually shows this plant in bloom. And I was like, oh my goodness, that flower is humongous. And so then I actually got really excited about getting this hybrid. So actually, of all of these hybrids that I got, as it turns out, the one that I was most likely to overlook just because the size reference of the picture didn't really, you know, the, the picture just really didn't tell me that this flower was humongous. So really and truly, it was like the thing that I got the most excited about was like something I was just going to overlook. <laughs> so I'm very, very, very excited to have this hybrid. I hope you've enjoyed this unboxing and I'm very happy with my order from Karma's Plants and Seeds Shop. So Hopefully you can kind of get on over to that Facebook group and, you know, maybe join, check them out. Uh, thank you for watching and happy cacti growing.